I'm a tuba judge, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, are you ready? Let's go for that daily bread. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say this after me. Say, Father, give me today my daily bread. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, I said this week, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge your life. And don't get upset, don't get angry, but just believe. You see, because sometimes you need to be provoked to change your life. And that's what I'm about to do to you today. Turn your Bibles with me to Proverbs. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Proverbs chapter 1. Listen. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. It says, Wisdom crieth without. She uttered her voice in the streets. Follow me now. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city, she uttered her words, saying, how long ye simple ones will you love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge verse 23 says turn you at my reproof reproof behold i will pour out my spirit unto you i will make known my word my words unto you now let me read this from another translation. This is Old King James I just read to you. Let me read from let me read from the Amplified Translation. Amplified Classic. Oh, hallelujah. All right. Listen. It says, Wisdom cries aloud in the street. I want you to follow. Wisdom cries aloud on the street. Now, when, when you see something in scriptures, believe it. Don't argue it. Believe it. Then you will understand. Wisdom cries aloud in the street. She raises her voice in the market. Now, you know how marketplace can be noisy. He says, wisdom raises her voice. Meaning that the voice of the environment can never drown the voice of wisdom. All right, so, so wisdom knows that in the marketplace that is noisy, what does she do? She raises her voice. Okay. What's the intention that you hear? Okay. She cries at the head of the noisy intersections. <laughs> in the chief gathering places. What does she do there? She cries. Okay. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. And what does she say? How long, O oh simple ones, Kalaba Yagabasha? Who are the simple ones? Amplified classic says, open to evil, prone to evil, prone to wrong. How long, you, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? You know, so I, I'm just simple, you know, I, 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 I understand what he's talking about, simplicity. So another word for being simple is to be a fool, you know, follow, follow. No, no firm, articulate decision for yourself. Just every, anything goes in your life. And scoffers delight in scoffing and self-confident fools hate knowledge. Now look at verse 23. Our interest actually is in verse 21, 22, and then, no, 20, 21, and then 23. It says, if you will turn, in other words, repent. If you will turn and give heed to my reproof or rebuke, 
or correction, right? Behold, I, wisdom, will pour out my spirit upon you. I will make my words known to you. I saw this many years ago. And I told myself, if I suffer in life, nobody's fault, my fault. I saw this many years ago. I'm telling you, many, many years ago. And I made up my mind, if this is true. Now, a few years ago, I was talking with a dear friend of mine. And we're just talking God's word. And he shared this with me. He said, do you realize that wisdom is actually the Holy Spirit? And my head just went boom. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, that's true. When you see wisdom cries aloud in the streets, she raises her voice in the market. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, that's why in verse 23 it says, If you will repent, if you will give heed to my reproof, I will pour out my spirit upon you. And when I pour out my spirit upon you, what would he say? I will make you, I will make my words known to you, Kalo Baya. It is not, it is not how much you went to school that will make you understand his words. He says, I will make you know my words. I will make my words known to you. So he is the one that opens up the knowledge of his words to you. If he doesn't open it, listen, you will only read and interpret, interpret nonsense into it. And that's the life with a lot of people. You think you're a professional in the scriptures. You can never be a professional in the scriptures without the Holy Spirit. But then he said something. He says, wisdom is crying out. If wisdom is crying out, why are people still suffering? Now, when you read, when you read Proverbs chapter 8, for example, take, take time to read it out. And, and you, you read it and realize the Holy Spirit is just saying, I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. And he's calling out. He's calling out. Now, if he's calling out, are you hearing him? Are you responding to him? Listen, why will wisdom be calling out on the street? Why will wisdom be calling out at the intersection? Why will wisdom be screaming at the marketplace? And yet, you're still in confusion. Doesn't that tell you something? You're paying attention to the wrong voice. Eh, I, I wish, I wish I had, I wish I knew, I wish I did. Come on, you're paying attention to the wrong voice. Someone else is speaking to you. And the one you're responding to is not wisdom. It's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there. He's crying out. He is not hiding his voice. He is not saying, oh, you must fast. Three days and three nights before you hear the Holy Spirit talk to you. No, sir. He said, I am there crying. It's so amazing that someone will fast for three days and still not hear him. Now, I've learned that when... when <laughs> now, there are things you will ask the Spirit of God and he won't tell you immediately. Yeah, there are things he won't tell you immediately. But something that has become a pressure in your life, something that has to do with you personally. Now, most times when you're interceding for people, interceding for places, you're interceding. Now, he, he reserves the right to talk to you about it or not. Now, even with that, there is how you pray enough. He can tell you, look, leave this prayer alone. I'll talk to you about it when I'm ready or leave this matter alone. But when it has to do with something that is of your personal interest why should he be quiet i'm asking god why i have not eaten for two days i'm asking god why i've been without any income for three months now six months now eight months so, so what's the holy spirit saying no he's just quiet he's just quiet on me maybe he wants me to fast some more that's not true that is not true he's not quiet <clears throat> i'm telling you this truth he's not quiet you are the one that is not listening. 
You say, ah, how can you say I'm not listening? I fasted. You see, you can be there trying to listen to a particular way that you want God to speak to you. <clears throat> you don't choose how God speaks to you. You listen out for his voice. Are you getting me? You don't tell yourself, eh, if God wants to speak to me, let him come into my room and speak to me. The truth is you that is saying, let him come into your room. You may not even have the capacity to receive him like that. He chooses how he comes. He chooses how he communicates with every one of us. Now, that choosing is not like he said, okay, this one, I will, I will appear in his house. This one, I will speak by an audible voice. This one, I will visit, visit him in his dream. This one. No, he doesn't choose it like that. He chooses it based on our capacity to receive. There are those whom he will appear to them. That will be the end of their ministry. Because if they cannot believe any other thing again. Or anybody again. But themselves. See, they'll say, Jesus appeared to me and told me this thing. Who are you? Pride comes in and that's it. So he chose not to appear to those ones. And then also, there are those whom he will appear to and their faith level will drop. So something the Lord told me. The most important thing is knowing that he is the one talking. And that, that comes with, with, with fellowship and understanding. You know, you pick up the phone, you hear, oh, John, is that you? How now? How come your number is not showing? Oh, no, I used another phone to call you. No, no. Because you know him. You know John. From the moment he's, you say hello and say, hey, from the salutation, you know who's talking. Because you have fellowship with that person. You know that person. Even though he's using another phone to call you. See? So that's what knowledge does. So when you say, oh, why can't God appear to me? If God wants to really talk to me, why? That's, you don't do that. You don't do that. Rather, you sit down and learn of him so you will know him. It's about understanding him speak to you. Then he says here, if, verse 23, Proverbs 1, if you will turn so the first thing he does in your life is to bring you reproof. That is correction. He brings correction. Now, why would he bring correction to your life? Because I'll tell you the truth, 99% of every decision you are about to make in life might be wrong. Without him, surely it will be wrong. You say, but I have common sense. I'm telling you the truth. Your common sense, the Bible says naturally, the flesh is at war against God. Your flesh naturally wants to go against the will of God. That's just how the flesh operates. Why? Because the flesh is used to this world system. It's used to what it can see, what it can feel. What... So all your decisions most likely is going to be based on what you can see, feel, or here, you understand what I'm talking about? And it is the Spirit of God that will tell you, no, that's not the way. This is the way. You're like, okay. Now he says, if you will. If you will. See, he said in Isaiah 119, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Now here he says, if you will turn at my reproof. If you will change your decision because of me, because I say change, if you will. So when he begins to reprove you, just like many of you listening to me now, you've been in one condition for so long and now you're okay. I want to pray. I want to talk to God. The first thing he will do is to rebuke you. The now when I mean rebuke, not say he will not call you stupid. No. He will tell you you've been doing this thing the wrong way. Don't start arguing, but Lord, but, but my pastor said, ah, 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 keep quiet first and say, okay, Lord, you're right. Teach me. It says, when you turn at his rebuke or at his reproof, he says, I will pour my spirit. See, when, when some of us 
talk expressly by the Spirit of God. It, it's something you need to enjoy. I'm, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it to you, but it's a wonderful life. <laughs> Praise God. When, when He pours out the Spirit of now, He pours out that Spirit of wisdom. Now you're just thinking of okay, how do I do it? Oh, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Thank you, Lord. I, I know what to do now. Praise God. That's the spirit of wisdom that he's about to pour out in you. And my time is up. It's part of wisdom to keep to that. Praise God. Oh, Father, we bless you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let your wisdom, Lord, that brings the understanding of your truth rest on everyone watching me right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day of the month. Hey, listen, we've got our 24 hours prayer meeting coming up on the first. I'll talk to you about it tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.